All right, y'all. Florida here again. Another episode of Dice Lemons. And I'm with my special guest, who's already laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. I got the green light, bro. We just got to keep it rolling. Florida again. <laughs> Who else would it be? You know, yeah. it is what it is. Well, tell the people who are you. Oh, what's up? It's Flip Out. I'm here with Floetic. Again. It's me for the first time. There you go. Back again for the first time. And uh, we're going to take a little sip of our lemonade here. Yeah, which is. This well, week is a uh, Simply Lemonade. Cheers. My guy. Simply. So basically, Dice Lemons. It's a little deep dive into your life. Mm, and- Simply Lemonade is fantastic. <laughs> Simply lemonade. 9,000 grams of sugar. It's fine. Yes. I'm trying to get you a sponsorship, man. You fucked it up. My bad, dog. Let's actually, how much sugar is in this? As much as a Coke. 40. 40 grams. More than a Coke. <laughs> okay. Be careful drinking Simply All Lemonade. Right. Diabetes in a diabetes. bottle. <laughs> well, damn. I mean. Woo. Sorry. A lot of people call you a Vancouver legend. Why? I think because I lived here my whole life. That's yeah, why. that's about it. You heard about you since you were like twelve. <laughs> exactly. I mean, when I was coming up, I heard you and Jay swing on straight goods. Yep. Friday, Friday nights, Friday night or Saturday? No, it's Friday. It was both. It, it it was Friday and then it was Saturday, or it was Saturday and then it was Friday. So explain what a straight goods is. I mean, I know what it is, but straight goods was a radio show, rap radio. We called it rap radio. Mm-hmm. Two hours, and actually, it went down to one hour and a half. Um, Straight Goods was the version of our rap radio show on 94.5 FM, mm-hmm. which was the beat. Yeah, it was only on the beat 94.5. It had already been canceled yeah. by the time uh, 94.5 ch- changed the version. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but that was our Straight Goods was the, like I said, the 94.5 ver- version of our rap radio show. But we started in 94 with the show at CITR. UBC. Mm. So, like, you've had some pretty crazy guests on there. I know you had Kanye on there. Was he, like, the biggest? Kanye was. Kanye didn't come to the radio. Kanye, we went, which made it even doper. We went to the, um, we went to GM Place, I think it was called at that point. Yeah. Which is Rogers. Yeah, yeah. It was the last day of his um, Glow in the Dark tour. No, not Glow in the Dark. The one before that. Touch the Sky. Okay, yeah, it was yeah, the yeah. last. We, Vancouver was the last day on his Touch the Sky tour, and A Track was his tour DJ at that point. He's our friend, mm-hmm. me and Jay Swing's friend, mm-hmm. and also uh, Sean Lala also got a was a part of that. So they hooked up this interview after the show. That's crazy. With Kanye, he's wearing a Christmas sweater. Yeah, like how was Kanye interviewing him back then? That he was cool back then. He was kind of drunk. Yeah, he was super funny. Yeah, 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 and cool. Was he like the? Were you in awe when you saw him? Because you're a big Kanye fan. Yeah, I was. Still like, am. Yeah, yeah. Like, at that point, where you like, oh, my God, this is freaking I just Kanye. wanted to have fun. And I, he's kind of trolly, you know? Yeah, yeah, So he was just cracking jokes about um, um, Adam Sandler movies. Mm-hmm. This was like an inside thing that him and A-Track and everyone. Okay. They kept quoting Waterboy and all this <laughs> shit. So I had to kind of keep up. Yeah. And then I, you know, and then I said, oh, you're the first person to quote an Adam Sandler movie. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, and Jesus walks. Oh, yeah, we pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> and that was like a bonding moment. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes on this big thing about about other Adam Sandler movies. And at the end of it, end of his rant, he's like, people are going to be listening to this interview. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? I want to hear beats about the beats and the equipment. And uh, what did you use? Or with the, like, he was kind of yeah. clouding yeah, 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 yeah. the whole thing. So the interview was cool. He was kind of buzzed. Fair it was, enough. it was, it was cool. Do you but, have the interview still? Uh, yeah, yeah, we made a whole special out of it for Straight Goods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a two-hour Straight Goods special, Kanye West special, where we got him to name the five beats he wished he produced. Oh, word. So that was pretty dope. That's super dope. Uh, there's like a Dre, Dre beat. He said he wanted to produce Explosive. He wished he produced Explosive, yeah. and he said he liked the drums so much on Explosive that he used them on like five songs. Oh, crazy. So he did. He used them on fucking... Uh, what was the song with Jay Z that was really deep? Song Cry? No, that was. Uh, there was w- the one he produced that was kind of a a more introspective. A Jay Z song? song? Yeah. Remember, the drums were on I that. I have to Art Google. City. Which one? Art of City. No, no, that was later. No, that's no, newer. no, that was later too. Anyway, he yeah, yeah. he literally used the drums on like five songs. Fair enough. It's kind of funny. Oh, another uh, another 
huge interview was Russell Simmons oh, inside the Beat Studios. That was insane. How, that's crazy. That's that's literally legendary. Yeah. Were you nervous? Did you, yeah, so you yeah. did a lot of interviews on the show. It wasn't just like did playing a lot of, new music. A lot of interviews on the show live. We had Guru in there. Yeah. Rest in peace. Um, we had uh, Fife. Fife fucking came. Holy crap. Fife and Dela. Uh, they had a drop. Jay Swing was trying to find the drop the other day. It was a drop where they're like, they kind of mocking Ja Rule. Okay. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, yeah. And I think Dave from Dela was like, yeah. And we'll be right back. Clap back. <laughs> clap back. And then you hear Fife laughing. and It's kind of epic, man. I'm sad we lost that drop. Oh, man. Um, so uh, I'm just going to say this. We've been talking for three minutes, and this is why I would consider you a legend. Oh, okay. Like, that's check mark number one. You've met a lot of dope people, and you did yeah. a lot of dope shit. Did a lot of dope and shit. And we haven't even, like, really dealt it with anything yet. So uh, we're getting there. Word. That's, that's amazing. So, like, what have you ever had, like, a bad interview with somebody? Yeah. Are you allowed to say who? Do yeah. you care? Yeah. Well, you mean, like, a bad interview on the air? I used to do interviews as well for a magazine that I used to do with Jay. Okay. What was that? Talk it about that. It's called Elements. Okay. And we did it ourselves outside, out, out of the CITR offices mm -hmm. under the Discorder um, umbrella. Yep. And my first interview ever on the phone, they were all phoners, mm -hmm. was with Method Man. Oh, sh And I had this phone that had two RCA jacks on it yep. from my homies mom who owned a radio station that was her interview phone i yeah, borrowed yeah. it yeah, yeah. and uh you you'll know this because you're you've dealt with tape yeah, yeah cassette recorders so i put the rca in the back in the back yeah. and i put it into the play instead oh. of the record but what happens when you press record and it's in the play it still registers yeah so, so nothing nothing, nothing <laughs> recorded so i was doing this I, I was working at this world of animation shop on robson but yeah. i was i didn't work in the in in, re, in the retail and I, I was driving around deliveries. Mm -hmm. So they had this Westphalia van that I got to drive, which was super dope. Yeah. So I took a break. I went and did the interview, got in the van. I was so stoked to listen to me interview in. Method Man. And of it was, course. there's nothing there. Oh my God. Was, that was, that was a bad interview. Sink? It was the worst feeling. <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's learning on the go. Worst interview ever? You're yeah. not going to believe me? Uh. Uh, Jay-Z on the phone like, for, for Elements. Okay. First album. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, what made it the worst? He thought I was a fucking idiot. Oh my God. He thought I was, he thought I was like probably 12 years old. <laughs> like I was so nervous. Of course. But I didn't really, no, but I didn't, he was just Jay-Z. Oh, okay. He wasn't like, no, I thought, I get what you're saying. Dude, I thought J-Ru was way better than him. I got what you're saying. Yeah. I yeah, thought yeah. he was way, I, you know, Jay-Z was just, he had a, uh, he had the song with Foxy yeah. and he had Dead Prez. Yeah. And I don't think his album I don't even know if his album was out, yeah. but it did an interview. The interview was so trash, we thought at the time. We didn't transcribe it for the magazine. Oh, my God. But I still had the tape. I still have the tape. Of course. And I, I played it on uh, my Save On show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like last year sometime. Yeah. And I did a, uh, I did a, a talk over. I talked <laughs> through the whole thing, seeing what was happening. And he was so, yo, Jay-Z was so nice to me. Now you, now you look back and like. I look back and man, what a. What an amazing thing. First of all, he was doing my first thing. I was like, hey, oh, oh, yeah. So <laughs> you're probably doing a lot of interviews today, huh? Like all day. And he's like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> the you one know? word. Yep. <laughs> Next question, please. He says some crazy shit in it. Like I just finished doing this remix with Melissa Morgan. Yeah. For um, for Can't Knock the Hustle. And then I remember the remix now. It's the Fool's Paradise one. Yeah. And so I think I knew at that time that that's what it was mm -hmm. but man i'm telling you that was a, that was a shitty interview well it's, i don't know that's a long time so i mean yeah. obviously you progressed and got better from that point got a little better hopefully <laughs> hopefully well, we never had no like crazy bad interviews you know who was a, I, I also used to, used to interview people on the beat for like dance mm -hmm, artists mm -hmm. that would come in mm -hmm. so i interviewed like pete tong one time oh that's dope and he wasn't that wasn't a fun interview to do because he's so legendary and i yeah, wasn't yeah so up on his legendary status mm -hmm. that he was like man this guy doesn't even know what the fuck i yeah, yeah. <laughs> could tell i felt kind of dumb and eric prids you know the guy who did the yep. call on me yeah, yeah, yeah that he didn't want to hear he didn't want to talk about call on me to make things worse yeah we played it anyway it was like yo i was like yo man we got to play it that's the song right we played it anyway and he's listening and he's kind of pissed off he's listening he's like this is a bootleg and i'm like 
Uh, oh my god. He was so He mad. already didn't want to hear it. You no, know, it was a bootleg. Played it. it was a bootleg. Did he walk out? No, but he was just like, This is a joke. Oh my god. That oh. sucks. Make me feel like makes me feel like a dweeb. Whose fault? Know? That's not your fault though. Kind of my fault. Okay. Okay. A little bit. Part blame. I think I'm a dweeb deep down inside so things like that make me feel like a fucking dork i'm like <laughs> i am a dork no matter how much no matter how much i think i'm not or yeah. I could, you know try to convince myself i'm not i'm a fucking dork this is the worst thing i could have done oh, man can't ever live this down and like ever but since, i got over it yeah i mean it takes it takes some time but you know you learn to progress yeah so prior to doing all the interviews and all that you obviously were djing before that yeah so like what started you in that path like what was the what was the first moment you're like shit, this is really dope. I kind of want to pursue this. Um, I think like I just really liked um, really liked rap music. I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what was it? That's a good question because I've been kind of asked that a whole bunch of times. Of course. And I have these. I I don't have like the answer I always give, but I'm always like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But. It was like me and my friend were really interested in DJing. His mom owned a radio station, mm -hmm. like South Asian radio station. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she had techniques and shit. So he, we just wanted to like be DJs on the radio. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't know what beats per minute were or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we found this magazine called Street Sound Magazine and it had this chart in it and in the middle it had BPM and this number. We're like, what the fuck yeah, is that what number? Is that? <laughs> yeah. So when we figured it out, then it was like, oh shit. Then we had a friends at school who were D, like who had cousins who were DJs, real DJs. I think it was Zuli Z actually. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Was cousins with Nabil, yeah. something like that. So they're like, we're like, oh, I'm a, I have records, whatever. And I'm like, listen, here I made a. He's like, make a mix. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, okay, here's a mix. And he's like, no, you have to play the songs over each other. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. So I went and I, I was like, listen, now I did it over each other. He's like. Yeah, but that doesn't sound good. <laughs> that sounds like, like trash. They have to match. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. <laughs> so it was kind of like trying to figure it out. And yeah. each time you figure something out, you get. I got so excited. Me yeah. and my friend got and so excited. And how old were you at that point? Fucking 13, 14. So like you're still a baby. Yeah, yeah 14 yeah. and 15. And then, and, and what the crazy thing is, what, what I love is that I, by accident, beat mixed three songs without knowing. Okay. And they were... Uh, Poison, Belle Bib DeVoe, yeah. into Rubby the Right Way, Johnny Gill, yeah, and yeah. All Right by Janet Jackson, yeah. which are all 113 beats per minute. Yeah. So without knowing what I was doing, I you did it. You already did it. And I dropped it on the one. So they so they worked. Yeah. And I, I remember being like, holy fuck, holy fuck. <laughs> and I played it for my friend. I'm like, listen. And I did all these other mixes that clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, listen, this listen part. Listen to this part. Yeah. This part is crazy. <laughs> That's sick. They're perfectly matched. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, holy shit. And he's kind of like a kind of like a uh, brainy guy yeah yeah Sidir, dj flight and he's like he figured out what beats per minute was he's like oh okay so we count the beats on a stopwatch in a minute and we tried to figure it out so we were like yeah. like we were trying to figure out like, where do you count like yeah, yeah, yeah and we did it. it was like one two three that was four, dope five six that's a dope story yeah that's and then crazy. we figured it out was that then, like the awe moment fuck yeah <laughs> that was fucking hell yeah that's then dope. we counted everything and i'm like holy shit that's like, super sick hell yeah street sound magazine had the codes there's like the vinci code yeah, you know yeah. so they but had now, the holy grail this whole time yeah so now when i use like the sync button mm -hmm. on serato yeah, i yeah. fucking love it yeah yeah. because i don't have to fucking beat mix i can just like just do just it enjoy I, and I, work on you the know how long and... i spent yeah figuring out how to yeah yeah like this bpm you thing? paid your dues yeah right? man <laughs> i'm using sync button forever <laughs> fuck do you remember your first gig uh first gig i've been doing new year's eve parties since i was 16. okay like house Every parties year. and stuff or like no nah, like party like when i was 16 i did the part the new year's eve jam at the paramount which is the all ages um so night. you were like gigging for a long time yeah were and you i did nervous yeah well i borrowed my brother's cd player yeah and i had a cassette player and i I borrowed a CD player so I could play some album cuts. Yeah, of course. Like that yeah, I didn't yeah. have on record. Yeah. And he got so mad because I borrowed it without <laughs> asking. He fucking trashed my room. That was crazy. He was mad. He's like six years older than me. <laughs> um, but yeah, like like that was one of the first ones. Uh, me and my friend Sidir, mm -hmm. we wanted to have a year-end party for, fuck man, I think it was grade, I think it was grade eight or nine. 
at Moss Crop. So a year end party. Yeah. Eight or so nine. Okay. at his mom's radio station. Oh, so we okay, sold okay. tickets. Yeah. For two bucks. You've been hustling for for a while now. We called it the Moss Crop Year End Dope Jam. <laughs> Plot twist. The fucking principal. Yeah. Pulled us in. And was like, what is this dope jam? Oh, okay. And thought it was, we were like drugs. Yeah. We're yeah. Like, That's a word. Yeah. yeah. Dope means cool, idiot. buddy. <laughs> you fucking idiot. You know, it was a woman. It was a woman. Yeah, buddy, whatever, buddy. Uh, it was, yeah, it was crazy to us. And then people came and we played like Mars, pump up the volume. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And man, that's when it all started. Everyone fucking hated it. Because really? we, we were into hip hop and shit. We yeah, were playing like yeah, yeah. cold hearted Paul Abdul, the fucking seven, the seven minute remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dub appella. The one you. that has no words. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. And everyone was expecting like hip hop, whatever. No, they wanted to hear fucking whatever was on the radio. Oh, I got what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like they're kids. So they came there. Like, this is cool. Dude, I was a virgin until I was 18. Got you. You know what I mean? Like, fair. Fair. Hey. And I didn't smoke weed till after I graduated too. It's just a fucking nerd. <laughs> that's that's like, nothing wrong with that, man. And my voice didn't change <laughs> f- till like probably grade fucking nine. And I did I was five three till grade ten. So like when was your cool moment? Like I think I'm cool now. I don't know. Come on, everybody. When has I started one. like not when, in grade eleven when I started like not going to school because I would stay just practicing dancing on the school grounds on yeah, the stage. Yeah. yeah. And I was like we were like the, we were like the the cheer. We were the cheerleaders of the school, our dance crew. Yeah. And I used to rap. Yeah, yeah. I felt B boy, B boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to go to all ages jams. Saw like Rascals, Romeo, and Chemo, and met all those guys out there at the all ages dances. But uh, did you uh, ever do graffiti? No, no. So that's like one of the one of the elements you one of the elements. You but missed? my crew was like Dedos, Virus, and uh, Z Lock, who were AA crew. Yeah, were, yeah, yeah. Like certified legends yeah you know dedos is still out there doing all his amazing work uh he he has this whole collection called the golden era Mm -hmm. drawings he has a whole ig and virus is like one of the first ever one of the founding designers at supreme that's sick and still is that's amazing it's fucked up. So you had a solid crew i mean like yeah that's dope you see there was a supreme jacket and uh Someone called it out. They're like, yo, that's like this old Vancouver Canucks jacket. It's because it's fucking virus. Because it is. Yeah. yeah because it is. is. It <laughs> yeah. actually is. That's sick, anyway. man. Okay. So you we like had... these stories? I love these. This is why you're here, man. So we had uh, the, the school dance. Principal yeah. kind of. Dope know, jam. Dope jam. And then. DJ uh, flight and DJ flip out. That's sick. Then we had the uh, New Year's Eve parties. What was your first club event? Um, first club. My first club experience experience of all of uh like 19 and over was as a rapper actually oh, okay yeah, yeah. so me and my rap partner mad child from swollen members mm-hmm. we were a group like in like when we were teenagers mm-hmm. shout out to mad child he's shout still mad doing child. his yeah, thing he's killing, yeah, he's killing it he's killing it yeah still living living his lifelong dream yeah, you know? yeah for sure he always wanted to have like girls with his poster on their walls and yeah. there's i'm yeah. sure there's a lot of girls with the sure. poster and yeah, yeah. fucking people have battle axe tattoos and shit yeah, like, yeah. they he definitely has a follower he's crazy yeah. it's insane um but we were in a group and um we entered a uh contest rap contest mm-hmm. so it was at uh this club called fucking starship which was on kingsway mm-hmm. near um near joyce mm-hmm. and dj alibaba was djing and we we went there. I had to sit in the back because I was underage. Mm. Mad Child wasn't. He was 19. I was like 17. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we went out and we won. <laughs> <laughs> we won the rap contest. Was it a rap battle or just like it was perform- a contest? Just like who has yeah. the best song or performance? Who, who has the best performance? Okay, cool. Yeah. And we opened for, as our group show and tell, we opened for Maestro Fresh West at that same all ages um, joint, yeah. Paramount, yeah. which Maestro always remembered. That's sick. Always remembered. And we also uh, opened for Salt and Peppa when they came in 92 to the Pacific Coliseum. And that was the night of my high school graduation <laughs> ceremony. So I left. Of course. It was like Philip Cabrita and then Rob Risk was our dancer. Nice. So he skipped the line. So yeah. it was like so and so, you know, with a C. Philip Cabrita, Robert Risk. And then and then the C, came, you know, he like skipped. <laughs> he just so kind of wiggled his way order. in there. 
So <laughs> my parents were there. We, we left. We, we had to go to the P and E. That's amazing. Went to the P and E and opened for Salt and Pepper and met them backstage. I lost my voice and it was that crazy. That's the craziest story. Yeah. Graduate I, and meet Salt and Pepper in the same night. In the same night. That's and then cool. I got to meet them later at Bar None. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like five years ago, because this guy bought out Bar None to have his 40th birthday party. Mm -hmm. And he fucking brought in Salt and Pepper and Naughty by Nature. He's a very rich guy. Are you listening to this shit? Yeah. <laughs> what? So I met Salt and Pepper. I was like, you guys will never remember this. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah. I met you when I was. Did fucking... they though? Probably not. No, they don't. <laughs> Imagine. Well, that would have been crazy. They're like, yeah, we do remember. But you. they were, I remember they were so nice to me. Of course. Like yeah. I thought they were kind of liked me. Yeah. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like they thought I was really cute. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My voice. And they're like, yeah. oh, what's up? You know, I remember that. I was like, holy fuck. I think they're kind of feeling yeah. me. Are you into me? Are you into me? Like, <laughs> not that I would know what the fuck to do. But. That is dope. Okay. Sick. So that's Great. your first, what's your first DJ club experience? Like, oh uh, yeah. Uh, in a club. Oh man. Uh, all I can remember is um, in an actual club. Fuck, I gotta have a good answer for this. All I can think of is Red Lounge that mm -hmm. that uh, G Man and Risk started. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was later. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Nineteen, nineteen years old club DJing. I don't know. There's a bunch of shit. Oh, well, what's fuck. your most memorable then? Oh, fuck. Um. Like uh, your mama's, yeah, 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 your mama's. That's one of the first. That was a hip hop night that mm -hmm. was at where uh, Portside is. Okay, cool. And it was uh, the promoter was uh, this guy Zach Santiago. Nice. Before he started DJing. Ah, uh, is he that how you met him? Kinda, yeah. That was sick. And he got Kilo C and J Swing to be the resident DJs. That was J Swing's first resident mm -hmm. residency on Saturdays. I got to DJ there like once or twice, but I got to DJ other spots. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure, we can come back Man. to that. I mean, whatever. I gotta think about it. Because I was still like rapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to do be a solo artist after I came back. So your focus was rapping first and the kind of DJ second initially? Initially I started I started DJing and rapping at the same time, I think. Okay, okay. Like well, I was writing raps to um rob bass it takes two yeah, yeah, yeah. to that instrumental yeah, so that yeah. was 88 87 yeah yeah and then i named myself flip out because i wanted for my rap to have a name that was a verb oh so i had called myself phil the mc yeah which and then i called myself <laughs> funky fresh phil that was a good one for the for the time for the time but yeah. then i changed all, all them all to ffs yeah. and then i shortened it by calling myself three xf Three times F, kind of like three times dope. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was whack. And then I got flip out, literally, because it sounded like Phil, Philip. Yeah. And that's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Yeah. I wanted a verb. And he just kept it. See how much of a fucking nerd I am? I was like, hey, it works, man. It and works. And then, and then it turned out that I started dancing, uh, in like around the same time, mm -hmm. and I could do backflips and shit. Now, do you still dance? Yeah, everyone can still dance. Everyone no, but like, dance. like. Can you still do a windmill and shit? I can do a windmill as a, a party trick. Actually? Yeah. yeah. That's dope. Because it's all momentum. So if I get fucking, no matter how fat I get, yeah, yeah. you can still Just do it. Just start it, it up. And you're yeah, it's true. <laughs> Just wind me up, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it as a party trick. That's dope. I got to stretch a little bit because it's like groin intensive. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Now it's like health risks, but that's fine. Okay, so let's talk about Zach. Because you guys have a DJ. or Yeah, you guys are still a crew. Yeah. May not do as much together, but you're still a squad yeah. yeah so talk about that like how that zach name santiago come up. yeah shout out to zach too yeah man los hermanos libres yeah uh, what does that mean free brothers nice and okay. it's a play on words libre means free yeah and we're also both libras oh word and my birthday is october think very 10 deep into shit i think very deeply you do i'll give you that All right. um so well i i like themes yeah i, can, I said this I, the other day i picked this up <laughs> At fucking uh, at made at at the, at the self made at homie show. Yeah, yeah, I was talking to Adam, right? Yeah, and I'm like, he then he started telling me about the codes and shit, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna see all these codes. I'm gonna do my whole set's gonna be the songs that you have. Oh, on the word! Codes. And I'm like, I love it. It's a theme. I love themes. Yeah, like, yeah. Again, I'm a dork. It's hey, like man. a theme. That's anyway, fine. Yeah, yeah. So my birthday is October 10. His is October 11. Libra, Libres. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We met back. Back when he was doing 
doing promoting. Mm -hmm. And then he started DJing. And in his words, to paraphrase him, he started DJing because he was tired of playing, paying these motherfuckers to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm going to, I want, I know what I want to play. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, play yeah. what I want to fucking play. That is smart. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then he went on to DJ at Bar None on Thursdays mm -hmm. from like, fuck, man, from 1995 until 2003. Holy crap. That's like unheard of nowadays. Unheard of. Yeah. And then they fired him and then brought him back with me to do Harlem. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you remember Harlem. No. On Thursday. So he actually DJed there like for like 20 years. Holy crap. So, um, yeah. So he's a DJ. He's also an actor. Mm -hmm. I just know him. We had, we went, we had uh, some similar, very similar like tragedies happen at the same time mm -hmm. so he he lost a a girlfriend his girlfriend at the time is like his basically common-law girlfriend when mm -hmm. he was really young mm -hmm. she got killed by a uh, a drunk driver running oh. like jogging on on um sunshine coast shit so she was like fucking she was like 19 yeah yeah, yeah. or tw yeah 19 or 20 uh she was maybe no she was 21 Tanya. Mm -hmm. So that happened in July of 1998. And then in October 1999, my girlfriend at the time of like four years, Maria, mm -hmm. we were in a car accident, head on collision, coming back from Whistler in, in on the sea to sky. She was driving and she died instantly. Oh, and yeah. I was in the car beside her. Yeah. So between the time when Tanya, when Tanya died, she is a twin. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, remember like one of the twins died at least before you know social media anything yeah, you yeah. just hear about things mm -hmm. and um then i went through this hard patch with my girlfriend maria and then i i made up with mm -hmm. her and then i saw zach and then zach kind of disappeared after his girlfriend was killed and he reappeared at the record store mm -hmm. and he looked kind of different and he had like goatee because he used to have a shaved head oh. and an earring okay now and that but now he looks like what he looks like now yeah, yeah dude yeah. if you saw him before he's like a fucking heavy dude like yeah. he was he was anyway <laughs> he looked he looked way different yeah, yeah, yeah you know um and i was like i was like where are you going he's like oh i'm gonna go visit the wife he'd go to see his girl visit the gravesite every yeah. fucking day so i was like i'll walk with you to the sky train mm -hmm. um and i walked there and i sat down with him and i said hey man like um uh, i went through this thing with maria and you know i and I made up with her, with her. I forgave everything because of what happened to Tanya. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, fast forward and then Maria gets killed. And it's like, yeah, you know, Zach's, um, he said some really profound things to me. Like when that happened, he, he said like the, my life purpose is to be here for you. Wow. For you to go through this. Yeah. Like that's, that's deep, deep, that's, yeah, that's deep, heavy. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, Things like that will yeah, create a bond. Of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and b just before that, it was like all these little things that were, that kind of, we were friends. Yeah. You know, we knew each other, but then that shit is just like, we that just took became, it to like the next level. Became a unit. That's where Los Hermanos Libres came from. Um, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah. Okay. Well, damn. There I you mean, go. Shout out to Zach, man. Did you know any of that? No. Okay. No, not, not, I mean, I, I, I figured something happened. Yeah. I didn't know the depth of it. Right. Right. So, um, so thank yeah, you for man. sharing that. That's yeah, amazing. Um, let's fast forward here a little bit. Sure. We're in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's take a leap here. <laughs> Fuck. I feel like, okay, you and I became closer, I'd say maybe like four, year, uh, four or five years ago. We did a couple of events with Soul Good. Yeah. And like we met and whatever, have a couple shots here and there. And me following you, I've seen you literally progress almost every year. Oh, wow. Same though, you're well, fucking that, killing it. Hey, we're both doing our thing. Yeah, <laughs> but like, it's not about me right now. It's about you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about let's talk about locally. SJS. SJS. Let's talk about that because that's like the biggest party in the city. Yeah, consistently, it's, it's insane. So, so how did that come about? So SJS was started with Marlon, Marlon J English, P Love, um, Aaron Dudley, and Ariel Swan. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's the nucleus. Mm -hmm. Um, Ariel and Aaron were like promoter. Basically, they started Slow Jam Sundays because they wanted to do a party where they could play slow jams, literally. Yeah, yeah. So I've told you this before. Like mm -hmm. their first ones ever were at the refinery. Yeah, you did tell me that. Upstairs and mm -hmm. shit. And there was like 30 people there. And it was literally just for their friends. Yep. 
just for their friends. And I wasn't a part of it. I went to one. Um, they asked me to be a guest DJ and I went there with 45s. Nice. So I went and, and played stuff. I don't think I really played that good. But, <laughs> um, so they, yeah, they, they just started doing that. And then um, it was every long weekend. So I think they asked me to guest DJ. Marlon asked me like a couple times to guest. And then he was like, okay, you're part of the family. And you and Marlon were cool way before all that. Man, I know Marlon from the all ages dances that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Like when I met all the East Van guys, those guys are all the East Van guys. I was from Burnaby. Mm -hmm. They were fucking wild, man. That's where I learned all the wild shit. Yeah. It was from these East Van dudes, man. Like, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I know Marlon for so long. Marlon used to be a, a doorman, a doorman, amongst other that. things. Yeah, I did not know that. Marlon also used to dance. <laughs> a man of many hats, literally. <laughs> yeah, go go dance. Even better. Yeah, but he was a doorman at the Red Lounge at the El Famoso night. And wow. when he f- first, he was like, "I want to start DJing." You know, who gave him his first Crater Records. Zach Santiago. Zach's just like the plug. Yeah, He's a- gave him the records from like from the pool, whatever. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So him and uh, him and P Love started up uh, Boy Scouts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So anyway, I know Marlon for a long time. So he's like, man, just be a part of the yeah, be a yeah. part of the family. So for the last five years, I've been one hundred percent solid part of the performance. And there's all the back end. That's yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That Aaron and and Ariel take care of a lot of that stuff. And Marlon, Marlon's like kind of like the mm-hmm, the glue. Mm-hmm. But they they just built this thing. And kept true to the theme yeah. again, the yeah. motherfucking the theme. theme. Yeah, yeah. And this is something that I want to just share with other other groups and people that are like doing stuff, mm-hmm. doing theme nights. Stick to the fucking theme. Like yeah, that's yeah. my word of advice. If you're setting out to do something, don't break because somebody wants to hear fucking you know, whatever's brand new, if mm-hmm. that's, or, or something that's not in your theme. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like when I did a, when we would do theme nights at sub Fu when I was still part of the shit at fortune, mm-hmm. it was like future night. I played fucking future the whole the time. Whole night. Yeah, and yeah. if anyone said anything, I was like, this is a future night. Like yeah, it's yeah. a theme. You know like, what you signed up for, man. Yeah. yeah. Like we, we kind of like, kind of go stray a little bit, but stay heavy in the theme. So SJS, the, the, the thing that that made them really succeed was really delivering what they were what they were advertising and not and not caving into it's not that busy you know oh we got to play something to appease the you know they did a good I don't know man they just did a good job of like really pinpointing their their crowd and it became a following mm-hmm. and because it was mostly like kind of throwback music. Mm-hmm. The crowd was a little older, so yeah, they're yeah. like the they're like the real weekend warriors. These are people with families usually, mm-hmm. and on the weekend they're like, "Yo, I want to go to a club. I'm paid now. I have a you know a, yeah, a yeah. job. Yeah, I want to go and turn up, you know, f- to the music that I used to turn up to, which is fair. And yeah. and you know that's p- kind of dope. But we also play new shit too because mm-hmm. it's it's slow jam so you know fucking you know our theme song was pyramids from nice. frank ocean for yeah, years yeah. Yeah. it wasn't like i'll make love to you by boys and men even <laughs> though we'll play that and it's insane to hear a whole crowd yeah just go so, off yeah i just want to give props to marlin and sjs because their commodore shows have been sold out all the time and mm-hmm. they have the most they have the biggest liquor sales in the history of the Commodore. That's insane. Because of that crowd. That's so That insane. crowd doesn't do a lot of drugs, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not going to be fucking doing a bunch of drugs when you're in your 30s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, some maybe do, whatever. Maybe. <laughs> but you're really going to buy bottles and want to floss. Yeah, yeah, with your homies. You got the money to do it at that age. Yeah, right? and you're not going to pre-drink. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you're in the bar. You're in, It's a, a concert hall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, and they also, SJS also brought in a lot of great acts yeah you know like marlon is friends with swv because he brought him in like he was thinking of of these groups yeah you know what i mean like he is the first one that i ever heard he wanted to bring bryson tiller when he had the one song out or whatever he's like i want to bring bryson and magic jordan too like he was marlon is really he's always like ahead of the game a little bit he is a little bit you know he is he i don't think he gets uh enough credit or maybe he does but you know he's kind of he's a visionary yeah it's kind of cool. He always had big, big fucking 
ideas. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make like a huge group in Vancouver that was all uh, singers and songwriters and DJs. Like he had that vision a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It never really happened, but uh, SJS it became his kind of thing. Oh, shout out to SJS, Marlon, man, my guy. So that's one one thing you're a part of. You're also a part yeah. of the Red Bull tour. Yeah, the Red Bull freestyle. So like, how yeah. did you get you know intertwined with that? That was also I was part of it when uh in the beginning stages of it so mm -hmm. it started in vancouver mm -hmm. with kenny mack kenny mcintyre was a red bull promotion event that he thought of let's have a dj contest mm -hmm. it'll be mashups so it'll be like do at least three styles of music in one night 15 mm -hmm. minutes like not the dmc's yeah, yeah, yeah. at all yeah. not a turntablism thing mm -hmm. party rocking and it was actually who's the best party rocker that was the slogan mm -hmm. and then like three years later lmfao ruined that term yeah, yeah, yeah. so We're gonna they, had a, that they had the, yeah, that they had the fucking <laughs> uh so i just uh it became this i i i was i ent i was in one of the first ones i was in the first one ever that's amazing yeah, yeah. when it was just at one club mm -hmm. and then i was in another one and then i hosted a couple that were just also local mm -hmm. and then i hosted one uh, and then i was in The first, I was in the first, I decided to enter the first year that it was an international contest, which mm -hmm. was in 2010. And then the following year, they're like, yo, enter again. And I'm like, no, head, <laughs> head spins entering. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's going to win. He's, he's going to win everything. As a matter of fact, he's going to win everything. Yeah. No, no, just enter. You know, just enter again. You know, they wanted to keep like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. So I was like, okay, how about this? And they had announced that the world finals is going to be in Vancouver. And I'm like, how about this? I want to host the world finals. Amazing. Because the year before, like, um, Curtis Santiago. I don't know if you remember Curtis Santiago. Yeah. Tulse. Actually, yeah, I do. Yeah. 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 He's known as Tulse now, I think. Uh, he's an artist, amazing artist. Um, but he was singing and shit back then. And he was the host. So mm -hmm. he got to go across Canada. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, like I want to do, do that. that. <laughs> and, and fucking, I remember G-Man and Kenny were like, okay, uh, yeah, okay, well, put your name in the hat. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't even say yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I enter, I went in the contest. I got second to Headspin, who later on won the world. Yeah, that's amazing. So that's not bad. I, I got second to the world champ. There you go. <laughs> uh, but then they allowed me to host the world <laughs> final week in Vancouver. And then I hosted every world finals except for one year mm -hmm. since then. Yeah, yeah. So like, what are some of the things that people don't see? Because obviously with any profession or anything, you see the glamour on Instagram you don't see the shit that you know people really go through so like man what's one thing that stands out from your world tour you're like this is what you guys don't see but it happens oh man like it's so dope to to be um like when i used to see the tour going and mm -hmm. the djs were going i would have so much fomo i'm like man of course this looks so fun yeah and then when i got to do it i'm like this is a lot of fun and it's also like it's destroying you physically yeah Maybe not mentally. Mentally, you're thriving. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like you're really, you know, you're absorbing everything. But like f physically, mm -hmm. you're fucking partying all the time. And I only drink. I don't even do other shit. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? You're partying all the time. You're drinking. You're drinking a lot of fucking Red Bull. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not because you have to, because it's the brand, but because you're literally up till five in the fucking morning. And, I, and you have to be on. Yeah. I'm yeah. hosting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're just, it takes a toll on your body. And you're like, oh, this is like. This is tour life. This is tour life. Yeah. Um, and also, I, you know, I have to, I have to remember that I'm not there to have, to, I'm not there like as a fucking, as a tag along. I'm there to, to do a job. Mm -hmm. No matter what, I have to do a good job of hosting. Yeah. And I've fucked up. I've like, I did, I had some pretty big fuck ups with some stuff. Nothing really, really bad, but some disappoint, okay. disappointing things. Yeah, know? yeah. Like forgot to do this major throw just last year. I forgot to throw to the new to like we'll see you in Russia next year, and they were all waiting. Like Austria head office, everyone's waiting for the queue of me oh. to end the live stream on a dope note. Yeah, you know, yeah. like there's confetti, there's everything, and my earpiece fell out, and like fucking Kenny was like running across the field, and then they were like, "This is fucked." This is whack. Oh, just, just kill cut the it. feed. Kill oh, the feed. Brutal. And then Kenny came up and was like, the fucking throw. You didn't. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I'll do it now. He's like, the feed's Too fucking late. done. I'm like, oh my God. He fucking, he Damn. was like, was I choked. was in the doghouse. Dude, I drank. Rob Risk was there last yeah. year. Yeah. He had a bottle of vodka and a plastic 
fucking thing. Yeah. Or tequila. Yeah. yeah. I smashed it. Just was, wallowing in your sorrows. Yeah. No. Oh, damn. It happens though. It fucking sucks. It's it, like it's like yeah, missing yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. The, the game throw. winner, the game winner there. Yeah. You kind of, <laughs> and you know, you always see the guy who the guy who doesn't and boom, bounce out. The other team's rejoicing, and he's like, Yeah, fuck. It's like LeBron or something. Yeah, because you know? yeah. I'm like the LeBron of the production, I'm yeah. the main focus. You're the guy, guy yeah. there. And I'm like, Ah, oh, fuck. My did leg- they, did they, my legacy is tarnished. Did they shit on you for a while, or you just kind of left it? Kenny fucking let yeah. me, he let you have let it. me wallow in it. God damn. So that's some of the stuff. Like it's still, sorry, it's still a production, you know. It's yeah, of still, course. And also, you know, and people, here's one thing. Here's one thing about the Rebel 3 style that people have a huge misconception that it's all so much politics. Like it's no politics. It's literally a bunch of fucking DJs who enter. Other DJs pick who they think are pretty dope. They judge, DJs judge the other DJs. Yeah. Whoever's dope, they're like, he's he or he's, she's dope. He's dope. <laughs> Let's score the card. They win. Yeah, yeah. On to the next. Like, there's no fucking politics. Like, oh, it's because he's friends with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing like I've that. I've heard that a bunch of times. There's nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing like that. I've it's, been through it. He's he's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been there. And and the thing is, you get judged, you get critiqued on your performance that night. Yeah, exactly. So even if you're you're if you shit the bed and know everybody, you're not gonna make it to the finals. You're not. Like yeah. once in a while people be like, once in a while I'll, I'll hear the judges be like, man, they fucking really didn't do the thing, but I know we know if they advance, then then yeah. they'll really pick it up, you know, because you'll see like reality shows will do that. They're like, Yeah, of course. We'll give you a chance. So there's some of that shit, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it's like That's the best person. Yo, was. that person they they killed it. They yeah. had the crowd, whatever. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Cause there's nothing on the line for the other DJs. Yeah, and there's nothing there. on the line for Kenny Mac. Yeah, yeah. We just have to make nothing on the line for me. We just have to make sure the event is super fun mm-hmm. and hopefully um is entertaining to a wide audience of people, not just DJs. Yeah. yeah. So we don't give a fuck about DJs or like that person is not technically awesome. Yeah, but he plays songs. Yeah. You don't know what fucking new songs are. Yeah, yeah, you fucking yeah. Grumpy fucking he, he rocked scratch the, master. He or she rocked the party though. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Like, I, don't I agree. F- they can't scratch as good as a fucking as a as a uh, portable ta- table is. Yeah. Well, some portable table is don't know what the fuck <laughs> a, a, a song that came out in fucking two, 2017 and and until yeah, yeah. now is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a party rocking contest. Yeah. It's not who can do one. Uh, one um, skill the best is yeah. someone who is well rounded, yeah. and someone who you can throw in a party, and they'll kill it. And they can they can kill it. They can figure out a way. Look at I the like that. look at all the champions, mm-hmm. all the champions, the world champions. That's another thing. People complain like this person. Uh, uh, uh. Only one person wins. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's exactly. only one world champion. Exactly. So, if someone wins a regional and you don't agree that they're not good enough to be the regional champion, they probably won't win the Worlds. They might not even win their heat in yeah. the, on that week. Yeah. But they were they did the best that night in their country. It's fucking 23 countries, man. Hey, man. At the end of the day, you it's just got to... It's a huge thing. That's crazy. Is, is there one country that kind of surprised you? Like, oh, this these guys are dope or these women are dope or whatever? Uh, last year, Brazil was so dope yeah. because the dude that got third, I thought he misheard me. Because he was so excited oh, shit. to get third, that w- even the production guys are like, "Oh fuck, he thinks he thinks he won." Oh, he, he was just hyped. To he be was like, so place. stoked. Yeah. Oh, that's he was sick. stoked to get third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was cool, and everyone was dope in in Brazil. Mm-hmm. It was cool. Um, man, I don't know. You've seen you 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 follow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fun it's a fun thing to follow. It's cool to be a part of. Like when I did it, it was the first time I was hella nervous. Yeah, obviously. Second time, I was like, you know what? This is what I got. Like it or not. Yeah. yeah. Keep it moving. And it's fun to be a part of it, right? It's dope to be a part. I met so many people from it. I'll, I'm still meeting people from yeah. it. Yeah. It's like a little community. It's it, Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And my thing is, like, my advice to anyone, just enter. Yeah. Like, if you want to enter, just, just fucking enter. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. And That's if fun. you enter and you, like, enter, like, not to win, like, that when I did that, when, when I went against Headspin, yeah. I was hammered. <laughs> 
I still did a, I still put together a, a set that I was pretty stoked on. Yeah. yeah. But it kind of allowed me to be like, I'm gonna play fucking this Van Halen a cappella on this Tiesto beat. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know if it's a key. I don't give a shit. Yeah. It sounds you guys, cool. You guys might like it. You might not. Yeah. Like, where's my jack? <laughs> I was wasted. That's and amazing. I just, like, uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Do you have a favorite champion? Oh shit. You don't need an answer. We could talk about it af- after. And I will not. Favorite champion. Um, we could talk about it after. Just keep that in the back of your head. No, I can answer it. Oh, okay. Go for I it. I can answer it. Go for it. Uh, my favorite champion because of the, the story is uh, Damianito. Okay. So he won in Poland. He's from Italy. He won in Poland um, in 2017, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So that was like the the eighth. Eighth? Yeah. The eighth Red Bull. Mm-hmm. And I think he's the, my favorite champion because... When he entered the Italian finals like two years before that, mm-hmm. he lost to Delta. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And but he was had so much potential. He's mad young, right? He's so much potential. And he hung out with I hung out with him afterwards and we just chopped it up. And I was like, yo, you should go to Chile, go to the world finals, mm-hmm. go there just to just hang out. Just watch it, yeah. Just go. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, I will. And I was like, okay. So we left. Uh, that was in uh, Bologna, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and he showed up. He came on his own dime That's from amazing. Italy to yeah, Chile, yeah. stayed the whole week, observed the contest, mm-hmm. and he was already doing production and stuff. And I was, and um, Trapment, our homie Trapment, mm-hmm. was down there. And uh, me and Trapment were hanging out. And Daminito came rolling by. And I was, you know, I was, I was kind of like in my feelings. Me and Trapment were getting deep about some stuff. Mm-hmm. And Daminito rolled up. I was like, see this guy? This guy is gonna. I think I said he's gonna win next year, or yeah, he actually did. he's gonna like he's gonna watch like he's gonna kill it next year, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and and he did. And the reason I'm not saying like I told the future, but <laughs> I think I put a bit of a bat- battery in his in his back a little mm. bit, and I also like really believed in him because he came to the yeah yeah, yeah. he he you know, followed like, through he followed through, yeah, and yeah. then he knows so much music and like he really wanted to win. He really wanted to win. And that year in Poland was such a, it was kind of, it was kind of weird. Like nobody was a clear standout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like s- people that were like favorites, favorites didn't really perform on their night very well. I remember it being really kind of they're like, oh fuck. And like the finals. Yeah. And he like he came out with the synthesizer or whatever. I right? think he was, yeah. Well, was he it? came out with a vocorder. The vocal, he came out yeah, with the sorry, fucking yeah. with the vocorder. Kill that. Well, it fucked up on his in his um Oh, the prelim. Yeah. yeah, he didn't yeah. make his. He didn't make. He didn't win his night. Yes, he got to the finals as a wild card. You're right. That's why yeah, he's my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah, because I just know his his growth and how much he wanted it, and he deserves it, man. Like he he's really dope. That's sick. But like you know, that's amazing. Hey, things happen. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, Damianito, you got the cosign. Uh, that's my, my homie, man. My flip out over here. And when he got on the tour the following year as the champion on the tour bus we had already done the tour bus like three years that's i had done it and uh he's like i know this bus like i know this kitchen i watched all your guys's oh, videos wow. so many times i know hans is the driver yeah and he was still the driver wow he's like i dreamt about being on this bus that's amazing yeah so he's like uh, he's like really excited so he you know I, I my one of my tips for people that enter is like just do your research on the on the the contest itself. Of course, you know because so many things have been done. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, 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 so many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just do it, and you'll have fun. You'll be like oh shit, that oh fuck, they that's a dope it. idea. Like yeah. this, this, this. Like just have fun watching all these different routines. I don't know if you're not really into it, then you're not don't don't have expectations to win and don't be a hater and be like oh fuck they're just looking for this type of dj <laughs> like motherfucker you're not even trying yeah yeah you you're don't just, even care you literally enough. here just hated yeah for no reason yeah i hear you i hear you i've been there i hear you <laughs> let's uh switch it up switch gears here as we wind it down are there any goals or anything that you see yourself doing or need to reach Say within the next five years, you have anything that you want to do? Oh man, I I'd like to. Um, it could be personal or business wise. Yeah, I'd like to get in a. I'd like to just. Um. Get in a place where I'm a little more, uh, s- like stable. I can f- financially like yeah, yeah. to support, 
my more creative things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like there's, so I'm going to tell you something off camera yeah. because I don't want to put it out in the universe. Yeah, yeah that's fine. But like, if there was certain, if, if I went through some big changes, you know, I'll just say that much. Mm -hmm. Like I could see a lot of my creative side mm -hmm. flourishing more. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I, get you. I need more, I need just to be, because the, you know, finances for someone that's for someone that just, I'm my own resource, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I work for myself. I'm my own resource. I don't have, uh, rich parents. I'm yeah. not from a background of anything like that. I literally have to make the money that to make me help me. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, I just like to have more, so I can spend a day making beats again. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. People will be like, "Well, just do it." You know, make spend an hour making beats. Like it's not that. It's easy. not that easy, man. That hour you're not making money or could be. Yeah, paid. yeah, I got you. You know, and I, I like to. And you, you know, there's man. It's just so. There's a lot but fair enough i'd like to just um i'd ask i'd also like to be able to do more uh mixes and pre presenting music mm -hmm. that i've found and that i've known about mm -hmm. especially with the records like the 45s yeah um and have a bigger audience for it you know i just want a bigger audience for stuff that i think is a little too niche okay you know you think there's an audience in vancouver for that well, that's a quick answer. Okay. No, I don't think so. Fair I've been enough. doing fucking bottleneck on Wednesdays for eight years. People from out of town come. They're like, this is the best night we've ever been to. Crazy. This is the best music I've ever heard. People leave the bottleneck. There's like 15 people there. It's a restaurant. Yeah. In Vancouver, nobody comes. Really. Yeah, yeah. Like no one's no one's being like, yo, where can I hear stuff that I can't hear anywhere else? Yeah, really yeah, Really appreciate. Yeah. They don't come. I mean, Vinyl Richie is like one of the best most like diverse music uh minds mm -hmm. ever he's out there and we're there yeah, yeah yeah i mean in japan you could do it because there's so many people there you know and i've been to in japan i've been to like cafes where it's super niche it's like as big as this couch here and mm -hmm. it's like all reggae yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. sick you know yeah, yeah. And people there love reggae the people that own the bar you know they love reggae They're music. They're all in on that They're side. They're all in. Like. Yeah. Well, I mean, promote it, man. Wednesday's Bottleneck. Wednesday's what Bottleneck, time? 9 till 1. 9 till 1. Just playing records. It's not a club. It's Just a restaurant. Come have out. Come hang out. Have a couple drinks. Yeah. If you love music and you want to kind of expand your mind a little bit, like hear some shit. If you like listening to shit that you don't know, then come. Yeah. And hearing stuff that... I love it when people come up to like, is this what happened last week? They're like, this is... Uh, what did he say? This is, is this uh, um, the rhythm of the night by DeBarge? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, but it's someone singing in Spanish. I'm like, yeah. And it was like this Peruvian cover of DeBarge. And he's like, this is fucking wild. Like he was, I'm like, yeah. He's like, this is wild. I'm like, I, I know it's wild. That's why I'm playing it. That's why I'm playing it. It's fucking wild. So that is dope. You get that. And uh, yo, I had, I just want to tell another quick story. Yeah, do you think? Um, there was a guy, uh, this guy named Kenny Ortiz, yep. who was like the musical director of Michael Jackson's tours, mm -hmm. like a bad, this is it. He was the he was filming something in Vancouver for like weeks, and he came in a few times after their product after they oh, that's dope. to do like a little meeting and have a powwow there mm -hmm. like three weeks in a row. First week I was like that guy looks like Kenny Ortiz, yeah. And the next week I'm like that's him, yeah. For sure. That has to be and Kenny. Like, and I was like, uh, excuse me, are you Kenny Ortiz? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I was like, oh man, it's great to meet you. Like, are you whatever? So I met him, and then I played fucking. I was playing music, and I played bongo rock mm -hmm. do you know bongo rock by incredible bongo band it's like i don't think i do it's like a break beat it's like a b-boy break beat mm -hmm. but it's kind of like it's not apache it's not like yeah, yeah, yeah it's like another song that they did mm -hmm. and he's over there and he's like he's yeah. rocking yeah that's sick you know that's it's from this it's from the 60s and he's like in his late 70s right mm -hmm. so he didn't like he he didn't want to hear he didn't care that i was playing like i think i played janet I think I was wearing this jacket. He was stoked about the jacket. He's like, that, wow. Yeah. But I was playing like some 90s stuff. Yeah. He didn't want to hear that. He didn't really respond. And I played this song from the 60s. And he's like, yeah. That's amazing. He was man. going off. That's like, amazing. This is That's what we live for. We live for that reaction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You play something, you take a risk and people love it. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Wednesdays <laughs> is all risks. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I, uh, you know, our motto, our second motto is playing music. Uh, nobody wants to hear. Yeah. We're playing weird shit. Fair. You know, because we're on Granville, so that's like a the anti Granville. Even though I have nothing against Granville. Yeah, yeah. But like, and I love all new music, but you know, Granville has his formula. It does in some that. places. I'll just say that. All right. Um, okay, let's let's wind this down. I need. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions okay. here. That I ask all my guests. Let's go. Uh, give me three things. So we call it three for three. Three things that need to leave. Three things that need to come back. <laughs> and three things you can't live without. And this could be literally anything. So let's start with three things that need to come back. Three things that need to come back. Yes. Um, uh, three things that need to come back. I was thinking about this in the car. I was like, ass whoopings by your parents. That could be one. But I don't agree. <laughs> we all, I grew up with ass whoopings. I did too. But then, you know, I also went to therapy and, and they're like, went to counseling and they're like, you know, that wasn't good, right? I was like, uh. It was child abuse? Like, yeah. yeah. I was like, mm, I get it. Okay. <laughs> I get it now. So I get to talk about this with my mom. She's in her 70s. They're like, you don't tell your mom. <laughs> she won't. She's not going to handle it. Yeah. She's not going to understand. So maybe ass whoopings. I don't know. Don't bring them back. <laughs> so I'm reading Prodigy's book right now. And he got ass whoopings too as a kid. Like, See, but there's a difference. Like, okay. Growing up in a Caribbean household, we never got like beat. You no. know what I mean? Like, I feel like North American culture whipped. is different than, like, island culture. Yeah. And it, it goes over to your old school European culture. Yeah, yeah. You so, get a th shoe thrown at you yeah. with amazing accuracy. I was dodging all types of shit when yeah. I was growing up. The fucking Hot Wheels track. Everything. Some people got that. My mom threw cream bottles, like, anything she could get her hand on. I was fucking Matrix at, like, 13. Yeah. I remember one time my mom went to, like, kind of hit me. And I blocked it. Oh, that's the worst. And and she hurt her arm. That's the worst. And she was so mad. She's but then she didn't you. really try to do it anymore. <laughs> I, I super. We're going off on a tangent here. So but, much. But listen, I remember one time my mom tried to try to smack me when I was too fast for her. But when oh, I, no. I got it the next day though, when I, when I, when I wasn't ready. Oh man, she she yeah. Oh, man. Okay, three for three. I don't know. Uh, oh man, I can't. I was thinking about this, man. It's hard. You needed like a week in advance to think about this. You had like five hours. I know. Okay, let me warm let me warm you up. Do you know what uh you know what um you know what soda pop or soda delicious is? The candy? Yeah. I think that shit needs to come back. Because yeah. I grew up on that and I used to pretend I was drinking a Coke or a root beer. Right. And that shit just disappeared on me. Like that yeah. needs to come back. Yeah. That's one of mine. Yeah. You know what I think needs to go? I think um because I just thought of like arcade games and I don't yeah. want arcade games to come back, okay. but I want professional gaming to leave. <laughs> like kids winning $2 million, good for you. But yeah. you know how crazy that it's ridiculous culture is? It's ridiculous. Like if, so if you're, you have a five-year-old kid, six-year-old kid, and they get good at video games, then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're breeding you're, them. You're going to breed them. Yeah. And they have a, they have a fucking shelf life. Yeah. Because when you're like, in your early teens, your your fucking motor f mm -hmm. things are fast. Yeah. When you get like eighteen, yeah, it slows. It down. slows down. Yeah. So it's literal physical. Yeah. Capabilities. That's crazy. And they have those contests, and they win a million dollars. Best fucking gaming. Fortnite and all Halo. It's and fucking all crazy. Crap. I don't think. I think that shit is fucking crazy. Like when I used when I heard about skateboarders, when skateboarders started becoming millionaires and shit, mm -hmm. like that shit's cool. Yeah. But it's a like sport. gaming is crazy. Okay, so that's it's gotta go. One I don't gaming think I like has it. to go. Okay, I don't think I like it. Fair enough. Haters have to go. Any specific type or just in general? The umbrella of haters, like yeah. all y'all needs. To... Uh, we don't got to get too deep. If it's no, just no, haters, I mean, that's it's fine. Just haters, that's I mean... fine. Oh man. Okay, haters. That's number two. You got one more for me? No. Okay, we'll leave it at two. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. It's three things that uh, need to come back. Three things that need to come back. Yeah. So we had two that need to go. Is there anything that needs to come back? Um, anything you miss, like food or a good song? <laughs> Not 20... Well, I can bring any food. I can bring any song back. Yeah, fair I'm enough. I'm a DJ. Fair enough. It's my job. <laughs> uh, um, man, every, you know what? Everything's... Everything always is coming back full circle. Fair enough. 
I don't know. Okay, let's make it an easier one. What are three things you can't live without? Like you need to have this at some point in your week. Yeah, I gotta I gotta get <laughs> I need to get a record in the mail. Okay. Record I need to go mail. to the mailbox and there be a notice to pick up a record. Is it soothing? Is that is it is it more the walk or actually like getting it? It's in getting it. Okay. It's a dopamine little blink. Fair enough. Yeah. A little upper. So I can't live without. <laughs> okay. Um yeah. Uh can't live without uh some some good vacation sunshine weather. Okay. Anything else? Uh we could leave it at that too if you like. It's up to you. I don't know. I think I feel like this is the easiest question I've asked you all night and this is <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is the one that's stumped you. That's all good. Fuck it. That's it. Is there anything you got you want to plug? Nah. Now nah, you're good. I mean, tell them your social media or something. Social like. media. I'm at Flip Out on um, IG, Instagram. I'm also at Flip Out on Snapchat, which I haven't used. Fair. I just want to flex that it's Flip Out, <laughs> like with no numbers out there and nothing. <laughs> um, and I'm at Flip Out on Twitter, which I am currently suspended from for remarking to someone. Yeah uh throw yourself into traffic please wow so i got i got cited and uh apparently that's like you know let's say that because they take like suicide yeah, yeah talk they, that's like very a threat seriously. or whatever like something yeah, yeah. so i uh, i disputed it and um and i couldn't delete it so i was like oh this is just a, t- a, f- a, f- a term yeah, yeah. Know, i didn't mean it literally yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're like nope that's it Nope, and so I now I appealed again. So you're banned. It's like forever? two weeks now. No, if you go and look, my account's still there. So I don't know what the moral of the story is. Some people because you're like, pretty active on Twitter. I'm super active yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, you're very. You talk to a lot of people and post and whatever. And like I was just trying to get a hold of like, uh, you know, some people I don't know personally, but yeah. I have a uh, a relationship with them. Like uh, you know the DJ eccentric. Yeah, he does all those edits, the yeah, Neptune's yeah. ones. Yeah. I like wanted to DM him with this one Neptune's instrumental that I don't think he he has. Mm-hmm. And like I couldn't DM him and I don't have his email. Yeah. So I fucking messaged him on Bandcamp. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I'm on Twitter. Follow me there. Yeah. If he doesn't follow back, you know why <laughs> he can't. Oh, and uh yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh Tuesdays once a month on rotation monthly at Celeb Tuesdays. Wednesdays bottleneck flip vinyl thursdays at belmont hotel upstairs with nick bike doing uh riding high playing records there too friday on rotation monthly at um fox doing sweet soul fridays with uh, phil david and and uh cory and also every friday colony 8 30 to 11 30 and saturdays at grand reserva <laughs> bodega restaurant and every long weekend sunday sjs Damn, this has been a long ass motherfucking episode. A dope episode of Dice Lemons. Myself, Floetic. My guy, Flip Out. Peace. Okay, uh, this is part two of our. What, what is it? What what three is it? Three that need to come back or? No, this is the three. Uh, the third thing that has to go. Okay, go for it. Motherfucking dudes doing podcasts with no female guests. Oh yeah. Dudes talking to dudes. The, like all only the time, yeah. all the fucking time. Yeah, that's weird. The whole never having a, a, a fucking woman guest. You never have a woman guest, guys. <laughs> I don't want to listen to you, even if it's something that interests me. You guys are like, it's, it's just like, can you be more? Like, you gotta try. You just have to try. One time. One time. One or two times, but like, yo, please. Here we are, two guys, yeah, talking. I'm oh, saying this, but females. yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. no, that's what it reminded me because you had Jay Makeham, and yeah. I'm like, yo, because you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I'm talking to everybody. And also, we need to have a world champion, Red Bull three style, a woman champion. Okay, so please enter because we need a, a woman champion. There you go. I like it. We need it, like. Please, it's too many men, too the many, world, many men. The, the world needs it. Yeah, like literally. 
there's there's a there's yeah we, we really need it it's like all the, like boys club shit is just like it's down it's dead it's done yeah the boys club is just so whack it's overrated it's super overrated it's, overrated. it's fucking overrated <laughs> i agree yeah especially on creative end like it can be all over but on creative ends like come on man boom fuck yeah, yeah. Okay.